Hey folks, welcome back to our channel. My name is Nigel and this is Off-Grid Van Life where we look at van conversions, off-grid power, lithium-ion phosphate batteries and everything in between. Basically, this channel is to help you uh, to kit out a van and convert a van so that you can hit the road and find adventure and have an epic electrical system that'll uh, help you to make uh, coffee or whatever the case is while you're on the road. So. Uh, in this video we're going to be looking at these uh, battery cells so the last video that we did um, we were <clears throat> looking at these uh, battery cells so these are from Lito Kala they are the cheapest uh, sort of reasonably reviewed cells that I could find on Alibaba so I paid uh, just under $300 landed to my door for all four of these cells so it was like 245 pounds that's includes shipping and uh, tax and all that sort of stuff um, so a very cost effective way of building a battery they are 200 amp hours so uh, quite impressive for the price really uh, so well that is uh, if they perform at their stated capacity so uh, did a first impressions uh, video last week where i looked at uh, what i thought of the cells uh, one of the uh, concerns is that some of them are reasonably bulged so we are going to build the battery out and then do some testing so um, with that in mind uh, I'm going to do a fairly simple elementary clamp just in the form of a couple of pieces of plywood uh, which I'll tape using fiber tape and then I'm going to connect the cells up in uh, parallel so that I can then uh, top balance them so uh, what I'm doing here is just to uh, try and uh, mitigate or remove some of the bulging that we have in these cells. Um, so as we can see, there's a reasonable bulge on them. So I'm not going to clamp it to the point where it's <coughs> really constricting. Actually, I'm going to move this up slightly. Um, not that I've just put that on. Obviously, taking very good care not to uh, bridge the terminals and short them because uh, that would be interesting in terms of having fireworks going off in here. But uh, again, I'm just using this stuff. This is just simple uh, fiber tape. So the idea with this tape is that it should not uh, have any movement, should not expand or anything. And I'm using the, the simple wood clamp here just to hold, pull the cells together, uh, try and remove some of the bulging a bit. Not that it'll actually <clears throat> remove the bulging per se, but it'll just mean that when I go to tape up the bottom, it will uh, obviously lever on that. And the hope is that by doing this, if there is any more bulging on these cells, it will uh, stop that. Alright, so there we go. We've uh, clamped these cells. Um, it's not a really tight compression clamp, but it's basically just to stop them um, expanding any more than they already have, if they do at all. Um, just checking here that I can get these bus bars on. Um, so one thing to note is the cells came with these little piddly bus bars, uh, which I really do not like at all. They are the thinnest little horrible things you've ever seen. Um, I really don't know. I don't know what the cross section would be. I haven't calculated what amperage I think those will actually take, but I just really don't like them. Um, I don't think that they are substantial enough to uh, use for this. So I'm going to be uh, using these other ones. So I had these just lying around in my stock. Uh, which are much more substantial. So I'm going to be using these bus bars. One other thing is these cells came with a set of uh, really piddly little horrible uh, screws, uh, which I don't like to use on this type of battery. So where you've got your the terminals drilled and then tapped, um, they are very easy to strip. And so what I like to use for that purpose is these uh, kind of um, uh, grub screws 
they're called, you can buy them on Amazon. I'll link them down below on this video. Um, and I literally just hand tighten them in and then I let the nut do its thing in terms of actually uh, putting the force on the terminal. And that way I know I'm not putting undue strain on the threads as I'm tightening it down and stuff like that. Um, or it's the, the best way around avoiding putting strain on the threads. Okay, so um, just before I connect everything up to top balance it, I'm just gonna clean up these terminals just using a little uh, diamond file just to make sure we get rid of any uh, corrosion or oxidation or whatever on the top of the terminals. Um, so I'm not going crazy with it. I'm just basically doing it to make sure that they are clean. I've seen on some of these terminals there was some uh, sticky residue so they may have at some stage put some tape over the top of the terminals just to uh, avoid anything conducting on them and creating shorts um, so I'm just essentially cleaning them up and trying to remove that okay there we go so uh, you may have noticed that I have these battery cells positioned in series rather than parallel. Uh, so obviously, uh, if you know anything about lithium ion phosphate and building out a battery like this, uh, you connect them in series to create a 12 volt battery, so with four cells. So if you want a 12 volt battery, you connect them in series. And uh, obviously when you connect them uh, positive to negative and vice versa all the way down the, the series of cells, uh, your outer, terminals then give you a 12 volt battery if you have four cells if you have eight cells you then have a, um, a 24 volt battery etc uh, etc et um, and so i've positioned them in series because that's the position that they need to be in when we actually get to build the battery itself uh, but because we are going to be top balancing them first before we connect the bms i have positioned them in series um, and uh, I will just connect them using a cable setup that I have. I'll connect them in parallel. And what that will do is it will allow me to um, top balance them while the clamp is on. Uh, there would be no point in uh, top balancing them and removing the clamp later on. Uh, yeah, so that's essentially why I'm doing that. And so what I am doing is using a bunch of these sort of cables that I've made up previously, uh, which I will put onto uh, these terminals. So one thing that I have just noticed is that the uh, the markings on this battery for positive and negative are very faint um, and almost impossible to see. And so just to be on the safe side, I am going to actually check that I have it right and I believe that the black is positive and the white is negative. Yeah, so if I go the other way around I get reverse polarity. Yeah. So black is positive, white is negative. Right. Um, just quickly before I connect everything, I didn't do it in the last video, but I'm just going to check what the uh, voltage is between them. So if I check that one, 3.31 that's what we'd expect. 3.31, 3.31, 3.31. All right. So looking pretty good on that front. Okay, so we're gonna connect up all of these cells. So. Um, I don't know what the manufacturer would recommend for these terminals, but my experience is that you do not want to go over six Newton meters. Uh, it's not very much torque, but realistically, uh, your chance of 
stripping these terminals is very high if you go over that. Um, and I know from experience, <laughs> I've learned the hard way. So uh, yeah, there we go. So that's the cells connected in parallel, clamped and ready to charge. So I'm going to connect up a charger here. So I'm just using uh, this charger, which is a weight. It's a 3.65 volt uh, lithium ion phosphate charger. So it's got a charge profile that's uh, built for lithium ion phosphate. And uh, yeah, it's a very simple charger, but I'm just going to leave that on and I will just monitor these and see how we get on. Okay, folks, so these battery cells are now fully charged. I've left them for a couple of days, not quite a while to charge. Um, the charges that I'm using are only 15 amp charges, so we're charging pretty much at a maximum of about 30 amps. Um, and so they're now fully charged, so I'm going to disconnect the charges, take all of these balance leads off, and then I'm going to connect uh, one of these to each of the cells. So I have four of these. Uh, these are the testers that I am going to be using. Uh, they're fairly elementary uh, testing uh, setup. Essentially what it does is it generates some heat and draws all the power off to essentially cool that heat down uh, on this device. And while it's doing that, this screen here will display the uh, information that we're interested in. So essentially I'll zero them all out set it running where it'll draw about 12 amps or thereabouts from each of the cells which will then mean that it'll take 200 amps uh, it'll take the best part of about 18 hours to deplete uh, each <coughs> uh, cell so obviously i'm going to run them all um, side by side and uh, then i will just check as soon as it hits uh, on on each of these things i set a low voltage disconnect or a cutoff uh, which I set at around three volts, uh, which is about the minimum that I want to deplete from each of these cells. So when it hits that, it'll stop the test and I'll be able to come back and check uh, how many amp hours it drew in that time. And that'll tell me the capacity of these cells, whether they meet the manufacturer's stated capacity of 200 amp hours or whether the cells are a little bit short of that. So uh, we're going to get this all set up here and then get the test running. So let's go. <coughs> okay, so I'll try and demonstrate that with this one. So got the dials all the way down there. I'm going to plug the power cable in here and he turns on and so uh, I can see here already that the last time that I used this tester, hopefully you can see that on the screen there, um, I drew 207 amp hours. Uh, so I think that was testing some KTL cells there. So it's looking pretty good. I'm just going to run through my settings quickly to see. Okay, that's all good. Uh, so then what I'm going to do is just hold that button down. It resets it so we can see I've zeroed out the amp hours there. And then when I go to actually turn this dial up, uh, it then counts up the amps. So I'm going to take that to around 12 amps, 12.3 thereabouts. That's the voltage of the actual battery cell. So it's measuring at 3.47 volts. Um, and then we're drawing 12 amps from that battery cell. So that one's good to go. And then we just go through and do the same with all of the rest of these things. So I have three of my testers running there. Um, one of them, I just can't get the plug to actually connect and stay connected. It just keeps dropping. Um, so obviously there's something wrong with the actual cable that uh, powers the, the tester. So I'll have to leave the others running and then I'll uh, count up where they get to and then probably just move one of these onto that one uh, when these other three have finished their test. So we'll leave that running and then I'll update you guys uh, once we have uh, finished those tests. So yeah, we'll check you in a minute. Okay, so the first capacity is done. So I'm going to wind all of these things down so that they don't start again because uh, they probably would just because the voltage loss on the cables uh, would cause them to kick off again. 
uh, and let's see how we did. So we have 170 sync, 170 sync, 176 amp hours throughout. Uh, so not a great start. Um, the voltage on these battery cells are reading 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, and 2.8 across uh, <clears throat> all of the cells. So they seem fairly evenly matched. Um, but yeah, to be honest, it's not a great result for the first test. So um, next thing we need to do is get this back up to uh, get it ready uh, to charge again. So we'll top balance it again. And I think the next test we'll do is to uh, build out the battery with a BMS. Um, so yeah, there's the first results not looking that positive, 176 amp hours. So uh, I might have to tweak some of the parameters on the test and maybe get in touch with the manufacturer just to see uh, what I can deplete the battery cells to without uh, causing any permanent damage, that sort of thing. Uh, but so far it's not looking great. Um, so yeah, I'm going to crack on with prepping it to charge up and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video where we'll cover additional tests and kind of a final summary of uh, what we think of the battery. So yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Cheers.